So I think uh, it's important to, to split the answer in two parts. So first one is about more the user experience. For instance, you have in terms of important developments, the ability to have multiple profiles in OAC now so that replicates the dual SIM or even more for the end user. I think also the the way that um, uh, we are now handling the device transfer. When you buy a new handset, maybe you had an eSIM before in your previous handset and now you want this eSIM to be transferred to your new device and there are ways to be able to do this pretty seamlessly now. I think that's, uh, that's pretty important. Of course, for the end users, the choice is also very important. Having mid-range handsets is, is very important too, and there will be more uh, this year. The second part, I think, is more on the operational one, more for mobile network operator, where they, they need to have solutions that scale up uh, because the usage is increasing, and also um, to have a, a way to manage the inventory in a digital manner and optimize it. And these are very important development for them, and they need to be ready for that. So it's, it's very important, uh, I think, because it's a long-awaited uh, evolution of the technology. eSIM in the machine-to-machine -to -machine environment was uh, pretty difficult to, de to deploy in terms of uh, remote provisioning services. So now uh, the consumer approach has been taken to IoT. It's a, it's a very welcome change. We think that there will be some important evolutions still this year in terms of interoperability testing, certification, meaning commercial policy in 25. And one aspect also that uh, maybe we should emphasize about the specification is also the ability to have what we call the IoT profile assistant inside the, in the eSIM itself. So that means you can have a product now that is really self-contained, kind of autonomous. It really simplifies the way you can integrate the eSIM technology into a device. So this is something that we are pushing uh, and uh, we see a lot of uh, interest about this, this concept that was not very uh, developed uh, in the consumer space. For instance, the uh, original uh, technology used for IoT now. So iSIM uh, today um, means two different things. Some people talk about iSIM uh, when referring to an integrated SIM functionality, and it's not a knee SIM, there's no remote SIM provisioning possible. We don't think it's really scalable an approach, uh, to, be, uh, to be honest. In order to scale the integrated SIM, the second flavor, the real, the true integrated SIM is what we, we could call an integrated eSIM actually. Uh, because it brings this flexibility we were talking about. And SGP32 is also super important for integrated SIM uh, to be scalable uh, because it, it brings all the, the benefits uh, we, we, we've talked about. And integrated SIM with SGP32 is clearly a way to expand the possibilities for the, uh, the IoT stakeholders. SGP32, the IoT, uh, the eSIM IoT standard is about connectivity, uh, management of connectivity, but it's not enough to unleash uh, totally the, uh, the IoT uh, potential, um, in our opinion. Um, when we talk to customers and to players in this field, they say the top challenge is uh, hardware design, the build phase of their activity, uh, then moving to production uh, using uh, Ideally, a single a variant of a product, single stock keeping unit, as we say, producing it in mass volume, deploying it any, anywhere, uh, being able to uh, uh, remotely uh, manage it, support it, maintain it, uh, is, is uh, also a very important aspect. And uh, problems by, on the field are faced by more than half of these uh, uh, stakeholders we have talked to. So that refers to the, what we call the run phase. And finally, um, security, I think it's some, something like 40% of them say it's, it's a challenge for them implementing security in the, into their IoT solutions. So the protection, the protect phase or the protect aspects of IoT are very, uh, is also very important to, to consider. So build, run, protect these three elements. Um, of course, you can put uh, the uh, eSIM IoT inside to, to answer some of them, but it's not enough. So you need to have a solution that is are based on eSIM for sure, uh, to bring connectivity, to bring security, but you need to take this from uh, this uh, higher level perspective. So we, we are working on IoT suite solutions that uh, answer to specifically to all these needs 
in all these three phases um, uh, that we've uh, I mentioned. We provide uh, uh, secure uh, uh, solutions for connected world. Basically, the, so our mission is to contribute to the digitalization of our societies uh, through the secure connection through cellular of uh, billions of people today, if you think about the smartphones and especially, and hundreds of millions of, uh, of devices, of IoT devices. So this is what, what we do. So we, we've built over the years uh, uh, a portfolio of solutions so from products, eSIM products, uh, what we call connected ESO product with an eSIM and an embedded secure element in, in the same chip and package, uh, the integrated SIM, uh, we have solutions to manage them remotely, uh, on-demand connectivity, we have uh, smart profile management, smart profile matcher, inventory management, um, bootstrap connectivity, uh, and so on and so forth. So th this, this started with a, um, uh, a set of products and a simple service, but we are growing uh, the, the, the set of solutions to, to make it easier for uh, our customers and for the end users to benefit from uh, secure connectivity.